began on the drive over here. I got stuck behind this guy on 405, I'm like 10 miles per hour under the speed limit. So aggravating. I was like, come on. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. The sign says 55. Why are we going 40? Come on. Do you have any idea who I am? <laughs> I'm an artist! <laughs> My public is waiting for me! <laughs> Get the light out! <laughs> <laughs> and when I, I got the last laugh on him, there was a passing lane after a little while, it turns out for that reason, <laughs> and I got up beside him and I went to look in the cab because I had a feeling, I just had a feeling about this guy. I look in the cab, it was right, I was right! It was a straight white man! <laughs> the worst drivers. <laughs> straight white man. <laughs> Some of you are probably wondering how I knew he was straight. <laughs> That's a good question. That's because he was eating a pussy. <laughs> It's something you'll never see a gay man do. <laughs> never. Right in the cab of his truck. Just going, ah! Going to town. There was no woman. There was no steering wheel. He just had a hold of those, you know, the, the bits. <laughs> going down on it, and I, as I pulled in front of him, this is why, it's why he was going so slow. <laughs> as I pulled ahead of him, I couldn't help but wondering why the horn wasn't going off. <laughs> I guess he just wasn't that good at it. <laughs> it's tough to do when you're driving. The women have it easier, they are just like... <laughs> yeah, uh, actually my rough start began a couple days ago because I was uh, I was texting with my lady. Things were getting a little hot and heated, a little a little intimate, and she asked me to send me a, her. She asked me to send her a picture. So I took a selfie. Don't look at my hairline. And I sent it to her. And she wrote back, Oh honey, you're adorable. I meant I wanted you to send me a picture. I wanted you to send me a picture. But without that tone in your voice, because it was a text message. <laughs> In the end, it turned out she wanted a picture of my penis, so I sent it to her. She sent me a picture of her tits, and the world made sense. <laughs> Some of her eyes were glazing over, so I just skipped that whole joke. <laughs> now, my rough start actually started like a couple years ago. <laughs> when I moved in with my mother. Uh, my mother's a great woman. She told me 
She tells me every day that she loves me. And that's nice. Can I say I love you back? Because I'm not a monster. <laughs> but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, geez, mom. Really? This guy? You're tasting men. <laughs> so I decided to perform an experiment. I found this nice lady, this nice retired woman named Nikki. She lives in Milton. And I broke into her apartment. <laughs> and I set up my computer in her dining room. And I got undressed in front of her cat. <laughs> and I played computer games there all day in my underpants. <laughs> and she did not love me for that. <laughs> she did not love me for that. So I said, Nikki, come on. Uh, would it help? Would it help if I blasted my way out of your vagina? <laughs> no. No, that made it worse. <laughs> so I'm standing there covered in amniotic fluid. <laughs> and I'm like, Nikki, come on, give me some time. I'll grow on you, I promise. Just give me like 10 or 20 years. <laughs> Promise you'll love me. She cried out, what have I done to deserve this? That was so dramatic. <laughs> what have I done to deserve this? And I said, Nikki, you let a man get too involved in your life. That's how babies happen. <laughs> So she shot me. <laughs> Nikki shot me with a gun that she kept for that very purpose. Turns out she uses protection. <laughs> now my rough start actually, it happened a couple of years ago. When I, uh, I started a new job. It was out in Chicago, I had just moved there, and uh, I wanted to make a strong first impression. I wanted to really like put my mark on that place so they, they, they knew who they were dealing with. And the secret when you're starting a new job is to find the other motherfuckers there and intimidate them <laughs> so they don't mess with you. So I went up to the biggest the biggest, blackest guy I could find. Not because he was black. No. I mean, they're cool. Uh, it's because of the prison stereotype. So I'm the biggest, blackest guy there, and I called him a cum dumpster faggot. On my first day of work. <laughs> it turns out that was his drag name. <laughs> Yeah, he has a seven-foot-tall Beyonce routine. <laughs> it's unmissable. He's a fantastic guy. I had Thanksgiving dinner at his house. <laughs> Great guy. Great guy. Come down to the Check him out. <laughs> For the record, this is a real person. His drag name is Coco Chanel. She's awesome. <laughs> anyway. My rough start actually began <laughs> when I was born into this world. A society totally failed to teach me anything about how to live in it. And it's because it's a society that was run by men, and they designed everything to resemble the penis. So you live in a world of foul imagery. And so I was thinking what our world would be like if it was designed by women to be more like the vagina. Here are some things that would happen in a society that is designed by women to be like the vagina. First of all, sports cars would have an accelerator that's impossible to find. <laughs> like the G-spot. Airplanes would be twice as hard to get off. <laughs> Sausages would have two layers of skin. 
like the labia. Those are the bits, the bits from earlier. <laughs> Uh, skyscrapers would be called cunts. Just leave that one there. And finally, uh, the greatest dicks of them all, Republicans might have some understanding about the uterus. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm